Yeah, so it's been great working with Film and Video Umbrella, just, I guess, in terms of kind of pushing my practice and pushing my ideas into something more ambitious. And yeah, definitely working with a script has been something I've been keen to do for a while, but I've never really had the full opportunity to do that and to realise it. So um, yeah, that's been great. And I think that's something I intend to keep going. I quite liked using the idea of the title. So Feed Me is this kind of something that runs through the film um, as a line that the characters speak, but something larger as well. So the desire to be full and something of the experience of the commodity or the, the consumer, which is the desire to eat and the desire to be fed, but the feeling of never being full, the feeling that you constantly um, have to feed the beast, I suppose. Um, but I was also quite interested in other ways you could read the idea of feed me or um, it being this idea of um, consumerism but maybe also an idea of in a larger sense in society who feeds who and um, you know do we uh, feed each other or do we feed off each other. In terms of reference points or kind of inspiration I was looking at quite a lot of initially kind of children's television and something of the gated off uh, world or kind of um, childhood of the mind or imaginary of childhood that's in a lot of programmes or contemporary children's programmes like Teletubbies and In the Night Garden and these kind of uh, very manicured almost utopian kind of worlds of cleanliness and um, almost like a safe space from what we imagine to be the danger of the adult world. In terms of thinking about childhood as well, I guess the idea of pretend runs through a lot of the work. So um, I'm the only actor and play all these different parts and there's this sense of there being a kind of very, uh, or quite a thinly veiled sort of pretense. Um, I play children that have these kind of warped, like Disney sort of uh, frozen eyes adults who have these kind of prosthetic um, masks um, that make them look wrinkly. Um, uh, so it's this kind of weird world already of kind of make-believe pretense um, masquerade. And there's this sense of, uh, there's like a finger gun that runs through the work and uh, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work like a real gun. Um, and all the characters kind of uh, seem to be doing serious work but always on toys and um, there's that kind of idea of I guess childhood and notionally being this kind of area where you prepare to enter the real um, and I got quite interested in the kind of intersection of the pretend and the real so how we understand that and often when something happens like a child or a youth shooting or youth murder um, it's explained in retrospect because children had been watching violent video games or violent films and this idea of how we understand the relationship of the pretend to the real and also I guess in paedophilia as well the idea of watching child pornography or downloading it and the power of the image and how that how it, within law that can relate to the real so there's that kind of overlap or this kind of uncomfortable space between the two yeah, so the film kind of deals with this idea of um, the relationship between the adult and the child and almost something of the imaginary boundary between adult and child. And I'm quite interested in um, something of the kind of power dynamic um, within that. So the characters are, in some ways, they're kind of stereotypes, but they're stereotypes which seem to be constantly inverting and kind of unstable. Um, so on the one minute you have this quite um, conventional sense of a kind of caring relationship between adult and child and then the next minute something more exploitative and then that kind of inverts in some sections to the child being something more monstrous that's threatening the adult. So there's this sense of threat um, in all directions at all points in the film. So in the work there's constantly kind of phrases being used or reused like um, 110% and there's this um, ball that's like a kind of uh, stress ball that is this free gift but also, or the idea of a free gift, um, but a free gift which 
has some kind of strings attached, non-specific strings, which are never fully explained, but there's some sort of sinister undertone. It's not quite free. Um, and when you squish the ball, it says, I'm too happy. So there's quite a lot of this sense of positivity and um, projected happiness, but always the sense of it being like one step too far. So when something gets so happy that it tips over into being sad or it tips kind of off some sort of precipice into being its opposite. Um, so I quite liked playing with this kind of positivity in an extreme way where um, it's this kind of gloss which at some point um, falls apart or seems to kind of disintegrate.